Many countries around the world now are wrapped up in this conflict, whether they like it or not. And, and then we see it in Germany as well, where you know the, the Biden administration has called for European allies to cut off their purchases of oil and gas from Russia because that'll strangle the Russian economy and deprive Putin from the money needed to, to continue the war. But the German chancellor, Olaf Scholz, just came out yesterday and said, there's no way we're going to cut off those purchases of Russian energy supplies because that'll drive our economy and all of Europe's economy into recession. So many countries are here caught in the crossfire, uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah. So, Matthew, let me pick up with that, because what is the read across then and drawing us back to the NATO meeting? What is the read across when it comes to the difference of approach over the embargo and Russian, on Russian oil and gas? How does that read across when it comes to the defence alliance? Because we've also seen cracks there. The Poles have been very ready to hand over their MiG-29s, but apparently the American administration isn't prepared for that to happen at this stage. So where do you think the splits are and how do you think they get papered over at this meeting? Yeah, what a great transition. So how they get papered over is going to be through some, uh, I think, uh, white knuckle negotiations uh, at the table. But what are the differences? So Poland is the perfect uh, uh, country to bring up. So um, if you look back into the history of World War II, uh, Poland remembers that uh, the United Kingdom, France, other allies had promised, had promised to come to Poland's military aid if Poland were attacked uh, by, by Nazi Germany. And indeed, in September of 1939, Poland was attacked not only by Nazi Germany, but by Soviet Russia simultaneously. Uh, and there was no military help. So the Poles call this the phony war, phony war. And so the, Poland's leadership has this precedent in mind and therefore has proposed at this NATO summit uh, that there be a peacekeeping force uh, that would be you know, consisting of troops from NATO member states. Uh, Poland has not been clear on whether or not it would push for uh, there to be a NATO umbrella but it is pushing for NATO to be prepared to send peacekeeping troops into Ukraine to begin with uh, to protect the humanitarian uh, corridors that are allowing Ukrainians, supposedly allowing them to evacuate cities like Mariupol and to allow uh, humanitarian aid to come in. Um, I think a lot of NATO member states are terrified by that idea because they know that <laughs> that's going to mean clashes of NATO troops with Russian troops and then de facto NATO's at war with Russia. So, um, so it's the Eastern NATO member states, the ones that actually have the experience of being invaded and occupied by Russia in World War II that are most concerned, are most pushing for a robust kinetic response. Uh, I ran a think tank in Estonia for a few years, and you know the Estonians remember that into the late 1950s, Russian or Soviet authorities were still deporting thousands of Estonians to Siberia more than 10 years after World War II. So for these countries that, that lived the, the, the reality of Soviet occupation and are now members of NATO, they don't want to repeat that history. But for countries that are removed from, from the interface with Russia and whose economies are so intertwined with Russia's, especially on energy, they kind of just want the whole thing to go away. And they're hoping, let's persuade Putin to stop the war so we can get back to business as usual with Russia. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.